The Pixel 5a is here, the newest release from Google in their popular mid-range line, which has offered a great experience and set of features that excel in the main areas without the fluff and the high price tag that goes along with it. So with the Google Pixel 5a, does it live up to the reputation? Well, I've spent some time using this, and there are always some pros and cons with any device, no matter how good it is. So let's talk about the top five best and worst things about the Google Pixel 5. But I can confidently say now that there are some great quality of life changes and some drama about about 4K 60 video and overheating, but we'll talk about that later. By the way, Google did send this out to me as a gift, but they have no influence or role in this video and see at the same time as you see it. And of course, if you want to purchase a Pixel 5a, please consider using the links down below in the description. Let's start with one of the best parts. After some drama about bad battery life in the Google Pixel 4, Google really learned how much good battery life meant to its customers and managed to make the Pixel 5 a phone that could solidly last a whole day, if not last until the next day. And people loved it. I loved it and I just don't want to ever deal with average or poor battery life ever again. The Google Pixel 5a boasts an insane 4,685 milliamp battery, the largest battery found in any Google Pixel before it, beating the previous Google Pixel 4a's 3,885 milliamp battery. And it clearly shows. You could honestly use this phone for two days if you wanted to, and I could with normal use. That means you're likely to still have an incredibly solid battery life years later, even after the battery life deteriorates, which makes this an insane quality of life improvement over previous models. Now, when you look at the previous model, the Google Pixel 4a 5G, and its specs and compare it with the new Pixel 5a with 5G, you'll notice an odd thing that is seen between both generations. The specs are largely the same. It has the same processor, the same graphics chip, the same storage, the same RAM, the same Gorilla Glass 3, and the same camera. Actually, they removed the laser autofocus, but I haven't noticed a decline in performance there. Anyways, if you're buying the latest generation of a phone, you'd expect to at least get an advancement in specs from the previous model, but mostly this isn't the case. This makes the next point a little more interesting because it's both a pro and a con. At a price of $450, which is $50 less than the previous model, it can seem like both a great deal and not so great depending on how you look at it. Getting the same specs with only a $50 price cut can seem like it's, well, not that great of a deal. It can actually seem like it's overpriced because so much of the guts of the phone are the same. But on the other hand, you're still getting a great phone that does the main things well, has a good balance of quality of life features combined with a relatively affordable price, especially compared to flagship devices. Now a little disclaimer, I, I know a lot of you who are not in the United States have tons and tons of options that are lower priced and have tons and tons of specs. In America, it's not that way. So I'm just speaking from an American perspective. Plus, I always say specs alone don't make the phone. It's like getting a computer and having the best specs in the world and putting in a cardboard box. It just doesn't make it a great experience. Having a price that's cheaper than not only the Pixel 4a 5G, but even earlier XL models like the 3a XL at launch by $30 is pretty nice. This is made even better when you look at other aspects beyond the brain of the phone being largely the same. Some aspects that are greatly improved on the Pixel 5a really cover some significant quality of life changes. First, instead of a polycarbonate or plastic build like previous models, the Pixel 5 has a metal build while also retaining that soft off-touch coating that still feels warm and calming to hold. It does feel pretty nice, but that gives it a nice feeling of sturdiness and heft that is there that just wasn't there on previous models. But despite it being made out of metal, you probably want to protect your phone from drops or customize it. So you can always get a skin or grip case from channel sponsor dbrand. I love doing that. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> See? It's fine ridiculous. You can find a link for it over in the description next to that like button. Now, beyond just a metal build, Google has finally fixed the one thing that has always given me a reason to add a disclaimer and hesitate when suggesting a Google Pixel A series, water and dust resistance. With an IP67 dust and water resistance, we finally have a truly insane, well-rounded phone that gets the main things right and you can realistically use it for years at an affordable price. Now, I have zero hesitation suggesting the Pixel 5a, but uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't disclaimers remaining. The downside of having a metal body is, uh, well, the loss of wireless charging. It just doesn't work on a metal body. That is, unless you cut out a hole for it like on the Pixel 5. Since this is a budget device, I imagine that would have made the target price point a bit difficult if they not only added wireless charging, but also had to cut a hole out in the body. Wireless charging is super convenient, and I know many people really love it, but plugging it in and fast charging is also really great if uh, you have a fast charger. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with one of those, but at least it comes with a charger to begin with? Bummer? Kind of conflicting, right? Now, the 
one thing that I think the Google Pixel A series excels at but doesn't get much credit for are their stereo speakers. While I still would prefer dual front facing speakers over one that's facing down, which I explained in a video up here, I do admit that the speakers on this are full and immersive with a wide sound stage, which is really cool to have on a phone. Uh, let's take a, a listen real quick. It also has a traditional speaker, unlike what was found on the Pixel 5, which suffered from subpar speaker quality. They use this whole under display piezo speaker. It's not great. And along with the good speakers comes a headphone jack. The luxury reserved only for budget devices. <laughs> Google even thinks it's a big enough deal to make a cheeky ad for it too. A glorious achievement that draws from our past as it propels us into the future. It's a headphone jack. Yes, it's a headphone jack. Oh man, who wants to bet on whether or not they remove the headphone jack in the next A-series device or not? Let me know what you think they'll do in the comments. <laughs> Here's another best thing, we have channel memberships enabled. So if you want to become a channel member, there's a join button down below the video. You can get custom emojis, have opportunities to tune into exclusive live streams that hang out with me. And I have a lot of extra tech laying around like some earbuds and headphones and speakers and all that stuff. Man, I wish I had a home for them. Now this next one is a bit of a debatable issue. While the Pixel 5a advertised is that it can handle 4K 60 frames per second, a number of people are saying that the phone overheats and it causes the phone to stop recording. On one hand, some people argue that most don't need that resolution and frames per second and think that most won't record that long or isn't that big of a deal, especially on a budget device. The other thinks it should be able to go until you run out of space if it's advertised as a feature and if it cannot fulfill what it says it can do, that's a big problem. I decided to do a little test though. There's a full video going over all that that's in the card up here. You should definitely check it out. And on top of that, some people are reporting that there are some touch issues on the screen. Now it's important to know that my single personal experience does not define the experience of everyone else, but I haven't had any issues. I've been really trying to look for it. I'm not finding anything. I'll keep an eye out for it, but that seems to be less common than the overheating issue. You know what is also a worse thing? It's the fact that over 89% of you that watch this channel are not subscribed. That's wild. I'd love to get that to at least 12 and percent. And we have a lot of pixel content coming up. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when I post a new video. Now, now, the one thing that really makes Google Pixel phones stand out are its unique software features. I cannot go back on having call screening, now listening to detect songs, live transcribe, car crash detection, and now hold the phone, which will do just that when you call into a customer support line and notify you when someone's back on the line while also talking to them while you return. It's nuts. It makes me feel like I actually have some of the aspects of a real assistant, but it's my phone. So to get crazy features like that at only $450 is incredible. If you really think about it. If you take a bunch of steps back and really look at where we are in terms of tech, we're actually really spoiled. <laughs> That's not just for the Pixel, but just like everything. Now, speaking of software, with the Google Pixel 6, Google has been indicating that it will receive five years of updates and helps them provide software support similar to that of Apple, which has provided software support for five years or even seven years to their devices. Unfortunately, the Pixel 5a is said to only include three years of updates, so it won't be able to enjoy that same benefit. To be fair though, three years is on par with previous Google Pixel devices and is even longer than some of the other Android phones you can buy from, well, other brands. But there you go, the best and worst things about the Google Pixel 5a. What do you think are the best and worst things about the Google Pixel 5a? What do you hope that they add in the next version? Are you planning to pick one up? Would you suggest this to someone else? If so, please consider purchasing through the links in the description right next to that link to pick up a dbrand case and skin and the link to the This Is Tech Today Discord server. Thanks again for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.